please going ahead. In fact, the report indicates that FY20 will be a difficult year as FY19 for the sector. Uh, you have uh, uh, Suprita Nijar, Vice President Financial Sector Ratings that Ikra joins us on the show. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, to start off with, firstly, if you could just help us understand, Suprita, in terms of where the housing finance sector is concerned. There has been major pressure in terms of FY19 and this was mainly on the back of the liquidity crunch that Ireland FS had actually created. What is the indication that you're getting with regards to where the weakness in FY20 is concerned and what are going to be the reasons? Yeah, good morning. Um, so, uh, uh, as far as 9M2019 is concerned, we saw a significant moderation in growth uh, for housing finance companies and the overall growth in housing credit came down to 13% year on year. This growth has been in the range of 19 to 20% for the last uh, six quarters and the portfolio remains stagnant uh, for HF HFCs as a we September level. This uh, stagnation in growth uh, has been largely because of uh, significant decline in disbursement levels as well as uh, portfolio, uh, portfolio sales done by housing finance companies to generate liquidity. Uh, going forward, we expect uh, overall market growth to, although for FY19 the growth is expected to be in the range of 13 to 15 percent, we expect the growth in FY20 to be in the range of 14 to 16 percent as housing finance companies would need to raise additional funding of around 4 to 4.5 trillion to achieve this number and given the recent uh, uh, tough environment for housing finance companies on the liquidity side, this uh, number also seems uh, uh, a tough target to achieve. Uh, however, things should uh, improve and uh, as uh, HSCs have also been able to raise funding from banking sector and and uh, securitization, so 14 to 16 percent kind of a growth number seems uh, achievable next year. Right. So, Suprita, you know, uh, as we've been mentioning that the liquidity crisis is something which has actually gone ahead and crimped uh, the credit growth of the housing finance companies. Now, how aggravating will the difficulties be with regards to the liquidity pressure on the asset quality front? Because as you mentioned, the stock of the repossessed assets with housing finance companies has increased. What's an impact that this will have? Yeah. So, uh, so although overall NPAs have remained uh, stable, however, uh, based on our discussions with some entities, uh, the overall uh, repossessed assets has, be, uh, has been on the rise, uh, and uh, the ability to sell these uh, repossessed assets has uh, come down as the uh, the market price, which in many cases is much lower than the loan amount. So uh, most of the HFCs are trying to hold on uh, to the repossessed assets and are waiting for an opportune time to uh, sell these. So uh, this is something where there could be some principal loss to which some entities may face because of uh, uh, the uh, liquidity uh, pressure in the market. Okay. And uh, apart from that, in terms of where the overall NPS is concerned, is there a possibility that, you know, the NPA levels could shoot up going ahead? So, uh, overall, uh, we do expect there could be some rise in NPA levels. One, because of the high share of non-housing loans where asset quality could be weaker. Secondly, uh, HFTs in the last few years have been uh, focusing on relatively riskier asset classes such as self-employed and affordable segment where borrowers' cash flows are more vulnerable to income shocks. Uh, further, there are some emerging risk factors uh, because of the tight liquidity situation such as delays in project ex execution and various properties uh, being under construction and uh, certain properties have been sold by builders under assured buyback schemes etc where there could be where uh, there could be some pressure on the asset quality uh, going forward okay uh, moving from there on uh, what's your uh, you know uh, uh, outlook with regards to where the bottom line is concerned now if you have to talk about the profitability of the housing finance companies do you think that could remain stressed because currently if you go to see in terms of where disbursements are concerned they have been going down 
if that's going to be the scenario that will continue in terms of F, you know FY20 as well, what's your outlook with regards to profitability? Because cost of funds is also going up. Right. So uh, if we look at the cost of funds, that has gone up by around 80 basis points in these nine months. Uh, uh, on the other side, uh, HSCs have increased their yields by around 50 to 60 basis points. Uh, also, given the lower uh, disbursements being made on the non-housing loan side where yields are higher, so overall we expect a 20 to 25 basis points shrinking in the net interest margins uh, going forward. Further, uh, because HFCs have not been able to uh, grow uh, as per their plan, so the operating expenses or the cost to income ratios could look weaker than uh, last year. So overall, there could be some moderation in the, on the ROE side uh, by around uh, uh, 16% to 13 to 15% in the uh, current year. Okay. So very lastly, Suprita, my last question to you is, now, with all of the negatives that we've spoken for the housing finance companies, anything that is positive, especially from the, uh, you know, new NHB norms that have come in, anything that will work in favor for them? Yeah. So these uh, NHB norms are uh, still proposed and uh, yet to uh, receive the final guidelines on the same, but uh, they are positive from a risk perspective. Given that uh, they are, uh, there are uh, the leverage maximum uh, permissible leverage of these companies is uh, expected to come down to 12 times as per regulation, which will be 16 times now. However, uh, based on uh, all the HFCs which we've analyzed, uh, only six HFCs had gearing levels between 10 to 12 times. So, uh, as such, we expect all the HFCs to meet the new norms as well. However, uh, they would need to maintain a cushion over these regulatory limits and there may be some need for external capital going forward. But overall, these uh, norms are very positive from a risk perspective. Okay. So, thanks, Suprita, for joining us on the show. So, the propositions that have come in from the NHP is something that could be working in favor. It's just a proposition yet, but we will wait for final details to come out of it. But thank you for joining us on the show. You are seeing pressure that's coming.